Are you truly united? Yes. I mean, when you look at the agitations going on, we know that the chairmanship of the party has been zoned to the south. Yes. And you can see the wranglings even within the south, and especially within the southwest. And it's, it's almost bitter, uh, the wranglings that we're beginning to see. Uh, how do you talk about unity within that sort of context? Yeah, um, I can authoritatively tell you that all the uh, chairmanship aspirants signed a memorandum of understanding that they will accept whoever emerged victori victorious in a free and fair election. So that understanding is already there. But politics is all about interest. Of course, they will try to project that I'm the best person, I'm the best candidate because of so-so and so. So I think they are trying to sell themselves. And I think it's allowed in politics. Who are you supporting? I'm a member of the BOT. I'm supporting all of them. They are all my friends. They are all PDP people who are all PDP family. You're being political now. Yeah. I mean, because you're running for deputy national chair, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you're hoping to serve with one of them. I can serve with any of them because uh, all, all of them, they have been founding members of this party, all, all of them. And we know their capacities. We know what they can do. And uh, I can tell you that PDP is one family. Whoever emerges as the chairman of this party, I can work with the person effect because I know all of them. I know them. What are your chances in this, in this race, at this convention? Yeah, my chances are very bright, I can say, because um, first and foremost is uh, a position that a woman has never vied for before. And um, we've gone around, we've, we've spoken with a lot of people, PDP stakeholders, and everybody is so excited um, about getting a woman to occupy that position. So I can tell you that I have a 99% chance of getting that position. How would you say that women are faring within your party? My party has done so much for our women, I must say, but not good enough, but they have done well. For instance, um, during the Obasanjo uh, government, I served in his government, he appointed up to 10 ministers. And apart from that, when I was a minister, we proposed the national gender policy, uh, which without any thinking, he just approved it. And the national gender policy was supposed to handle um, women issues in politics, participation, um, a lot of things. So you can see that the government was passionate about uh, women's participation in politics. Uh, come to Jonathan government, he had almost 15 ministers and a lot of chairmen of boards, parasitas. It was during the PDP period we had a woman as um, uh, president of the uh, uh, Supreme Court and all that. So uh, the PDP government has really supported women. Heads of agencies, ministries handling sensitive ministries, you had women doing that. So I can safely say that PDP government was very, very sensitive to women issues. They promoted women and um, I think we did well. To what extent would you say that your husband's name has helped you? The fact that your husband was a founding member of the PDP has helped you? Well, um, I cannot run away from being his wife. I'm his wife. And, uh, but I can also tell you that I have um, done my politics on my own. I ran for Senate in my senatorial zone in 2003. And when I was going to contest, he told me that go and try it and see how how you can come out. I'm not going to tell anybody that my wife is contesting. Let me see how you're going to relate with people at home. Believe me, I went home and I stayed for eight months without coming to Abuja, for eight months, talking to people, talking to our traditional rulers, everybody. I had to do it myself. And I can safely tell you that I had, we were six in the, in the, in the contest, and I did very well. Uh, on my own, without my husband talking to anybody. But you did not win it, did you? I, we, there was supposed to be a runoff. And in fact, that, at that point in time, if a woman and a man was running for a position and they had come neck to neck, normally the lady is supposed to get the ticket. That was the policy of PDP then. And I was supposed to get the ticket, but as, as you know, what brought the PDP down, what we were talking about, impunity and imposition. I was not able, I was not given that opportunity, but I did so well. Nobody won. Uh, the men we were contesting with, we came maybe first and second with somebody. So, and also, both of us, we did not get the ticket. It was given to the third person. Mm. Nevertheless, even within your community, of course your husband's name will still have helped you within your community. But 
then, you know, he said, I wasn't going to talk to anybody for you. You were going to do the hard work yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From your experience, how would you say then it is easy for women who have no name to help them, as it were, and maybe even no capital to, to, to go through that political process? I agree with you 100%. I cannot deny the fact that um, being a Demuturomo's wife helped me a lot. Even as I'm talking to you now, it's helping me. Uh, because a lot of people will say, oh, she is our daddy's wife. The man has done this for me. The man has helped me in one way or the other. So I cannot deny the fact that um, what he did for this country is also working for me. And uh, as you rightly said, politics, the world over, not only in Nigeria, you need a lot of money to participate in politics. That is why in the PDP, to encourage women, we, don't, uh, we have waived um, what we call the cost of nomination forms, just to encourage women because we know that financially it is very difficult. So I agree with you completely that um, if you have a, a name that's so working for you, it's good. If you have the resources, it's good. But if you don't have the two, the struggle is much harder. I agree with you completely. There is a book written recently by a young lady. I don't know if it's been published yet. Uh, her name is Aisha Osori, and it's titled Love Does Not Win Elections. Have you heard of that book? No, I have not. Well, in the book, she chronicled her struggles. She's a pretty, pretty uh, intelligent lady, and she did try to run for the House of Representatives within your party. Mm -hmm. She chronicled her experience, you know, trying to run to take a ticket for the 2015 elections for the House of Representatives here. Um, and I have not read the book, but I have listened to her talk about her experiences within that book. And she talks about how difficult it is for women with no known surnames to make headway. She said that even this... Uh, saying that women should be able to get their nomination forms for free is tokenism. And that that's just, you know, a way of just keeping women quiet. Is this something you agree with? Yeah, I think I agree with her because for me, um, just because you do not, do not pay your nomination fee, she um, does not make it um, easier for you. Uh, what we need is the decision, people that take decisions on who should contest and who should not contest. And also, there are so many things that are involved. Apart from money, there, there is violence, a lot of things. So there are issues that I think the political parties, not only PDP, need to look at. We make our, our election process, uh, it must be safe for everybody, first and foremost, especially for women, because of all this uh, brigandage in politics. Uh, apart from that, also the people that take decisions on behalf of the party. At times, offices are zoned, and we find that women are zoned out. And for you, if you say you do not agree, you are on your own. Mm. Haji, I want to ask you to hold your thoughts for us. Mm. You speak a bit more on that uh, when we return from this break. We'll also be talking about uh, the Ministry of Women Affairs. Having been a minister there, what impact should the Ministry for Women Affairs have to justify its existence? All in a moment. Please stay with us.